Hiya, and welcome back to Sylving. The game that teaches us that maybe Mikkel isn't a bitch. Still want to slap him though. Anyways, let's just hop right in. Oh, look, I wish I could beat it up. It was tough getting up the following day. The sun covered half the bed, but I stayed curled up in the shadow near the edge. Mikkel and Agnar told me to stay inside, to trust them to figure out what to do with me. So all I've done these past couple days is mope around the house and avoid the windows. Aww. Not that I have anywhere to go aside from that cave, and what would I do there? Sleep? I doubt it would be as comfortable as a bed and roof over my head. I've spent the last day and a half in the bedroom all by myself, sorting out my feelings about being stranded here for who knows how long. Agnar's been bringing my meals up to me. Really appreciate him attending to me while I sort out my thoughts. He also brought me fresh twigs and ground spices. I was confused at first, but he said they were for keeping my teeth clean. Never thought I'd be chewing on sticks to clean my teeth like a dog. I guess actual four-legged lions do that too. The spices were an odd touch, though. He brought me enough to last for a few days, but I ended up using them all because I kept biting too hard. Controlling the strength of my bites is difficult with how powerful my jaw is now. It felt odd, especially on account of my new pointier teeth, but at least it was something to do. And it helped freshen up my mouth. The flavor of the spice was close off toothpaste is, but with the tingling aftertaste. Not the fresh minty sort of taste, more of a salt water mixed with pepper and mint. Today the first thing I feel when I wake up are the abundant feathers of the thick pillow my face is sunken into. I don't know why I feel so groggy after an entire day of lounging around and doing nothing, but I guess I'm just emotionally exhausted. What happened back in the cave still bothers me. What's going on with me? Did some sort of magic come out when I was upset back then? No matter how many times I think about it, I'm still clueless as to what it really was. It was kind of scary when I felt that pressure throughout my body, but I'm too curious to ignore it. I've tested a few different things carefully just to see if I could make it happen again. I tried imagining small white sparks coming through my fingertips, like in a movie I saw once. But I don't remember what movie it was, but it's the closest thing I can imagine that might work for whatever it is in me. I throw my arms toward the ceiling in dramatic fashion, like I'm a wizard casting a spell before chanting the magic words, Abracadabra. Yeah, I knew it wouldn't work. It was worth a shot, though. I've been waving my arms around and shadow boxing some made-up martial art to get my blood pumping, but nothing so far. I'm glad I didn't catch anything on fire, but I still want to know what that lightning show was about. Don't really want to be the first human turned to Lion Man to explode in bed. Huzzah! I've tried channeling the emotions I had back then. Enraged, despondent, inconsolable. But I held back when doing so, since I didn't want to lash out of full power. Maybe that's why I've had no luck at bringing it out. For now, being in full, ra in full rage mode is the only clue I've got on how to activate it. Can't say for certain, since I can't get as angry as back then. It's probably best I avoid that feeling while in town in case I lose control again. The sunlight moves across the bed, leaving no place for me to avoid it any longer. I could close the shutters or force myself out of bed. I choose the third option and pull the blanket over my head. Yes. Darn, it's too hot to stay under the blanket. Still tired, but I'm too warm now to get comfortable in bed. I squint my eyes, peeking out from the shade under the blanket, looking back at the bright light coming from the window. You win this round, son. Hiya. I pull the blanket off again and lay quietly for a while, listening to the muffled sounds of the crowd beneath the window. This town must be pretty big if the market gets this noisy this early. I grab my phone from the, ch from the chest and turn it on, checking the time. 11.03. It's almost noon already. Must be the middle of rush hour for them. At least I think so. Don't really know what the local time here is. My phone could be off. Heck, the length of their days could be different. There's 19% left on the battery, and I couldn't, and I didn't carry a charger with me. Not like there's any outlets for a charger anyway. I'll be fretting over it dying soon, if it wasn't for the fact that it's pretty much useless in this world. Got no signal, no internet, and no chance I could reach anyone and know with it anyway. Oh no. It's not even useful as a clock since I don't know if it's out of sync with the local time zone or not. Still, I want to save what little battery is left just in case. Switch my phone back off, but hold on to it. 
Since I've got nothing to keep myself busy with, no browsing or chatting online, I don't know what to do today. I can just lay here and wait, I guess. I think I'm going insane. I pull myself up and out of bed, wrapped in the red blanket. My feet land on the pile of discarded clothes I left on the floor yesterday. I've been using the same clothes for a few days now, so I'd rather not wear them when it's just me in the room. Standing up, hunched over, I tread, trudge over to the table. Relief from my joints from finally being stretched out again. I didn't realize how stiff I had gotten after laying in bed for so long. Nope. Nope. Wop. Enjoy the cute squad. Sitting back down on the stool, I put my phone down on the vanity and stare at the mirror. Oh, oh, we're good. Indeed. Well, I look terrible. Droopy eyes, messy hair, and the most miserable frown I think my face can manage. I don't think I've ever seen a line look this drained. After all I've been through, there's not much wonder, and doing nothing but staying in a single room for days makes me feel more exhausted by the minute. God, I wish I had some coffee right now. My brain can hardly ha can hardly function. You know what? I'm pulling the sensor back up because I don't know if he's going to stand up and his dick's going to... Surprise! I'm just so tired. <gasps> oh my god, that was adorable. That was adorable. I gotta rewatch it. Whoa. Seeing my mouth open so wide, my own reflection scared me. I know my face has changed, but I still get surprised by these things. My teeth were so shut up. I thought I was about to get mauled by a wild animal for a second. I mean, I am half animal now, but it's still hard to believe this is me. This is really... Wow. My tongue's so long now. Hanging much farther out of my mouth than before. I'm surprised I didn't notice that earlier. My teeth have become dirt, dirk-like fangs, with smaller, pointed incisors between. No wonder I could eat that bread rock. With teeth like these, I could probably crush bone. And the size of my mouth is incredible. I could fit my whole fist in there. Easy. It's also animalistic. Good morning, Aaron. I close my mouth as I turn around, waving my hand to greet him. Hi, Agnar. I heard moving from downstairs, so I assumed you had awoken. How do you feel? Good, I guess. Just a little tired. I mean, I still look like crap, and I'm jumping at my own reflection, but physically, I'm alright. You should probably eat if you have the appetite for it. I figured you might want something different today. It's downstairs when you're ready. But before that, I need to talk with you. Since we're forging you a new identity, it's best we ease you into it right away. Lord Mikkel and I put together a plan for you. Are you awake enough to hear it? Right, he mentioned something like that the other day. I need to wake myself up a little more so I can stay focused. I smush half my face into my palm, rubbing the soft beans against the fur. Yeah, I'm awake. I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove the cute squad. Yeah, I'm awake. What's the plan? We will be focusing on your clothes and background today, and gradually introducing you to the locals. We'll need to prioritize making you blend in so they don't get the wrong idea about you. As I'm sure you've noticed, your garments are quite different from ours. I have been tasked with replacing them with something more local, so I'll be taking your measurements. Lord McCoy will provide the coin to purchase the clothes, as well as food and other items you might need. But I shall be acquiring those things in instead. I'll also be carrying the coin purse now that I'm your guard. No offense, but I don't want to risk it getting stolen. Now that he mentions it, I've not seen so much as Mikkel's pointy nose since the, since the mishap at the cave. Where's Mikkel, anyway? I didn't see him yesterday. He's back home, doing paperwork for the upcoming hunt. His family oversees the preparations for the event every year, and it's quite the task. He came last night while you were sleeping and told me that the work piled up in his absence. Usually, they cater to the people attending, it's present time to drink and water. make sure that it's safe to hunt in the woods. It's time to drink water. But this year, they've hired more it's security time to drink than water. needed, and this, there's been an unusual it's amount time of time to drink water. Parent. His older brother should be the one taking care of it, as he is the head of the family, but instead of falls to Lord Mikkel. What about their parents? They're currently traveling overseas and will be absent this year. And as a result of all this, the workload is far greater this year than ever before. 
I think they have something in particular planned this year. Lord Mikkel told me he couldn't go into detail about it, as it's meant to be a secret. Since the tradition has been upheld every year, he's working hard to fulfill his duties early, so that he has more spare time to assist you. I know you must think I'm unreliable, but he always gets the job done when he puts his mind to it. I expect he'll visit again sometime tonight. Wolf pre presents a measuring tape made of fabric that he's been holding in his hand the whole, whole time. Looks kind of worn out. He gives me an encouraging smile before noticing my clothes spread out on the floor. Are you already undressed beneath the blanket? My clothes are starting to reek. My nose couldn't take it anymore. I was hoping to wash them at least, even if I won't be wearing them anytime soon. I see. Then I'll get straight to measuring you. You can take off the blanket now. Wait. Right now? Is there a problem? I'm not wearing anything right now. Wolf gives me a confused look. I'm naked. I don't understand. That's when you normally take someone's measurements. Having clothes on just makes it difficult to get an accurate read. Is there something you don't want others to see? Um. Who's going to explain it to him? I wince. I wasn't expecting that we'd be doing this with nothing on. I just don't want to be measured naked. I'd like to cover myself up first. Agnar tilts his head in canine-like fashion. It's like he's never met someone who's modest around strangers. Or at all. Oh, hi, uh, welcome. It's been a minute. Then he nods, not questioning it further. I understand. Then I'll be right outside when you're ready. Hang on. Once he's out, I let the blanket fall from my shoulders and toss it back onto the bed. Glance at my underwear laying on the floor, the sole pair I've been wearing for the past few days. No. Instead, I just grabbed my pants. I figured they'd smell the least after all they are jeans. And I only need to cover the more... intimate parts. Give them a hard thrust to lodge them in place and let out a weak grunt when they stop at the hips. The tail's in the way. The base isn't quite above where the, be where the belt line ought to be. Forced my pants to sag lower than to my liking. Jeez, I keep forgetting that I have a tail now. Just a whole new limb sticking out my butt. When I try to release the waistband, my fingers get stuck. My claws are literally hooked into the fabric and won't come out. With a few shakes, I manage to pull them away, and predictably, they tear. It's not as bad as the Swiss cheese that is my shirt's collar, for when I ripped it the other day, but I probably shouldn't let these claws stay as they are if this keeps happening. I'll have to ask Agnar if he can help me trim them, or if there's some trick to avoid tearing even more clothes. Try to make the best of it and simply fasten the zipper and button, however, there's still a small gap beneath the tail. Hopefully I'm not so exposed that he can see this is all I'm wearing. Maybe I should have tossed on the shirt too, even if it smells terrible. But Agnar doesn't wear a shirt. Maybe I'll be fine without it. It's still kind of awkward for me, but I'll have to play it cool. I'm ready. You can come back now. Good. Now that you're comfortable, it shouldn't take long for me to measure you. He presents the measuring tape again, gesturing to the middle of the room. Would you please stand here? I do as I'm told, standing right in front of him as he unrolls the tape. He moves closer to me, my, bed, my head barely reaching his chest. I'm still amazed by just how tall he really is. He bends over slightly down to my height. I'll start at your shoulders and move down. All you have to do is spread your arms and stand still. As he wraps the tape around me, I'm pulled towards him without much effort. It wasn't that strong of a pull, but I'm still having some balance issues even when standing in one place. You can hold on to my arms if you're having trouble holding still. This shouldn't take long. His hands hovers around my head before I feel the tape on my back. His large hands gently follow the shape of my shoulders. I take him up on his offer and place my hands on his upper arms by his biceps. It's an odd sensation feeling his arms. The fur is short and thick, but it really looks like the arm of any human except bigger and hairier. He moves down my chest following the curve of my waist. He measures the length of my torso and the thickness of the tail. Agnar straightens up, rolling the measuring tape around one of his fingers. That should do. I'll find you clothes that are loose so you can move in them freely. I'll head to the tailor and come right back. You'll be on your own for a while again, but I'll try not to be long. If anyone knocks, don't let them in unless it's Lord Mikkel, of course. Your meal is downstairs in the oven. It should be warm. I hope it's to your liking, Aaron. Agnar leaves the door to the hallway open and I hear him leave the house. I lift my arms, stretching in place for a few seconds before letting my whole body relax. Then I take a deep breath. Since I'm getting new clothes, I might as well put my current ones in a single pile. For cleaning later. 
pick up everything, even my shoes and satchel, and tuck them into a corner on the floor. I didn't really have to, but I felt I needed to put them together in one place. As I take another deep breath, my nose picks up a familiar scent that tickles my mind. Apples. Cinnamon. And something buttery. No way. Is that what I think it is? I hurry down into the kitchen, searching until I spot a small black door that I can only assume is the oven. Pulling the oven open, the tantalizing aroma grows much stronger. On the smooth clay surface, it's a metal plate, and the treasure on top makes me feel more at home than anything else so far. It's an apple pie! A whole one at that! It's about the width of a tea plate, small enough for one person, with the golden brown and shiny crust. I fetch a fork and knife from the cupboard. Agnar keeps his plates in cutlery and place it all on the table. The pie is lukewarm, so I'm not worried about getting burnt while handling it. Using the knife to cut a small piece out, I hold it close to my face at the end of the fork. It's moist inside, but it doesn't drip. I don't know how much I missed this smell. How many years has it been since I last had apple pie? I don't think I've had any since Grandma passed away when I was still just a kid. She wasn't an amazing cook, but she was always the best at baking. She knew apple pie was my favorite, so she always prepared one for me when we paid a visit. I lean forward in my seat and dig in. Warmth spreads throughout my body as the flaky, buttery crust breaks apart with the tiniest bit of pressure. The sweetness of the fruit with just a hint of sourness. The toffee-like goo between the chunks. The cinnamon bringing it all together makes for an experience that is both pleasant and comforting. It doesn't taste like how Grandma used to make, but this is still pretty damn good. <laughs> Fragments of memories wander through my mind as I continue eating. How me and my sister would play hide and seek behind her flower pots and the scoldings from grandma when we made a mess of our shoes. And there was that time I went through her closet and wore her clothes and wig to dress up as her. She could not stop laughing in her chair and took pictures with her old Polaroid camera. I was pretty silly back then. But a lot of the strange things I did were for her, because I liked to hear her laughter. I miss her. It didn't take long before this pie was all gone. My full stomach and the lingering taste of cinnamon really helped wake me up. I leaned back in my chair and take a moment to relax. It was really good, but I feel like I could eat some more. Before I know it, Mikkel comes bursting through the door and shuts it behind him. Ah, you're up and out of bed! Splendid. Hi, Mikkel. Yes, good morning. I am sorry for the delay. It should have been sorted out yesterday, but I was simply swamped with work. He's full of an odd energy, but the bags under his eyes tell a different story. He looks outright exhausted. I can see him teetering on the spot. Just how much has he been working since I last saw him? I was just so behind on the paperwork, and my older brother gave me such a scalding. With so many coming in, we went and we many through documents of before big event. Um, he pulls the chair across from me out a little, then practically crashes into it as he attempts to sit down. His satchel falls thoughtlessly to the floor. So many more are coming this year. So much to do. So much to. To do. He tilts forward in his seat, struggling to keep his eyes open, and starts nodding off. We're suddenly bolting upright in my seat, eyes in his seat, eyes wide in shock as he realizes he was about to fall asleep. And my apologies, I dozed off for a minute there, didn't I? I finally got caught up with the pile of work yesterday, but then I had to work through the night together when I needed to help create your background, so I'm afraid I didn't get much sleep. He waves a paw somewhat dramatically in the air to make his point, nearly falling off the chair. <sighs> I'm a bit worried. He's really not all here. Are you okay? You seem a bit... frazzled. <gasps> oh, <yeah. laughs> oh my god. That is aggressive. Let me just. I am fantastic.
Mikkel slapped his face hands on the table, leaning in way too much towards me with an ear-splitting grin. That's... good. He's definitely not okay. I can see an eye twitch like he might snap any second. To be asked by a sylving about my well-being, what an honor! But let's move forward, I've completed your documentation! <laughs> yeah, uh, funny thing about this microphone. I can adjust the E- I have an EQ on it. I have an equalizer. So I can do some very fun shit like become a fucking radio host. He reaches into his satchel and withdraws a scroll. He unfurls it onto the table and presents it to me. I'm not exactly sure what to make of it, but there are a few blank spots. What's up with the empty spaces? I wanted to go through it with you and add some of your real information by blending the document with certain truths. Make it easier for her to memorize. I see. Sounds like a good idea. So, where should we start? He reaches into his satchel and pulls out a bottle of ink and a quill. He readies himself to write while pulling the document back to his side of the table. When is your birthday? April 17th. Your kind must be using different names for the months. But I do remember reading the word April in this strange thin book during one of my many expeditions. It had details and illustrations and grids with numbers inside. Who knew it was a calendar I found back then? How fascinating. Let's see, tell me the season you were born in. Spring. Then let's say it's in the month of Burke. And your age? I'm 25. Ah, so you're only a year older than me. His feathery pen flutters around as he fills in the blanks. Do you perhaps have a mate? A mate? Your lover, a woman whom you are to marry or are already wed to. Uh, um. Can we go with a male wife? Is it can we have a male wife? Because if we have a male wife, can can our male wife be Senchi from Delicious in Dungeon or Dungeon Meshi? Or perhaps Lars? Your lover, a woman whom you are to marry or already wed to. No, I'm still single. I've not even been with a guy in a while. I myself talking about dating men and reach for my mouth. It slipped out before I could even think it through. I'm worried about what their concept of gay people in this world might be like. But Mikkel doesn't even flinch, keeping his nose to the paper as he scribbles away. Maybe you didn't hear me say that. And done. He blows over the fresh ink, picking up the paper and scrutinizing his penmanship before offering it to me. You need to let the ink dry first, but this will serve as your official safe conduct. With this, you should have no trouble if anyone asks about your background or if they need identification. I'll be making a copy to register you with an hour record as well. I did thorough research and decided the best choice for you is to be from Schallenhof. It's a beautiful place that borders as the borders the sea with mountains and great vistas. It is in the far northeast and the village is small. It's distant enough that it won't be suspicious that you don't know our customs fully. But a lion couple that moved there decades ago, people rarely travel there and as little is known about them, which is perfect for us. It's a shame that there isn't much cultivation there, which is why so few live in Schallenhof. But that'll help you prepare to be their child. That that'll help you pretend to be their child. After all, that's at a big yawn as he hands the roll of paper to me. Is there anything you would like to add? So this is my fake ID. Just a piece of paper with some text and a stamp to the right. Hold on, let's, let's read this. This documentation states that the identity lion who carries the last name Sonor is verified by the Veoskogen family. Born in Schallenhof in the far northeast of Nafor, his parents, Anna and Bjorn Sonor, born in the March of Burke, 1401, height... 179 centimeters, appearance, white mane and blue eyes, race, lion, gender, male, occupation, traveler, unwed. So this is my fake ID, just a piece of paper with some text and a stamp to the right. There's not that much written on it, I guess the registration system is pretty simple. I can only trust him that this is enough, but I know nothing about this Schallenhof and what it's like. I should probably be prepared if someone asks about what it's like. Could you tell me more about... 
<laughs> Mikkel fucking died. Ah, shit, we got no bitches. Body has been discovered! <laughs> yes. Mikkel passed out hard and crashed into the table, snoring loudly. He must have really struggled to stay awake till now. Can't imagine how much trouble he'd be in if he's caught forging documents. I'm not sure how bad it is to use a family stamp to fake an ID, but it's gotta be as serious as impersonation of forging a signature. Despite the risk, he's still doing it for my sake. With how much he's trying to make up for his mistakes, I should be a little nicer to him from now on. I look at the document again. I'll need to memorize the basics before I go outside again. My name is Aaron Sandre. My parents are now Bjorn and Anna Sandre. I'm a traveler from Schallenhof. I feel bad using someone else's last name, but it's only temporarily. I don't plan on doing anything while I'm here, so I hope they don't mind me borrowing it. The small seal has, a pinned, a, has pinned a strip of fabric to the document, and there's some sort of symbol on the wax. This, that must be Mikkel's family symbol. It's the only thing that makes this scroll look legit. I hear the door open behind me, and when I look up, I see Agnar walk through with the package in hand. I wave at him to get his attention, then point at Mikkel while holding a finger to my lips. Wolf gives me a curious look that notices the state of the unconscious fox. He gives a knowing smirk and shakes his head. He quietly shuts the door and turns back to me, pointing to the stairs. I nod, and we both make our way up to the bedroom. Oh god, oh wow. That is... wow. With just the two of us, we can make it if we try. Death by snoo snoo. Death by snoo snoo. Death by snoo snoo. Death by snoo snoo. Once inside, Agnar closes the door gently. Guess he didn't get much sleep again. He was a bit out of it before he kissed the table. Really looked like he needed the sleep. Yeah. Yes, I did. That is not uncommon for him. I've seen him lock himself away in his study with new trinkets he picked up from your world. He would always get carried away trying to figure them out. And when I would come for a trip to the cave, he would be half awake. Does he do that often? More often than you would think. Trust me. Did the two of you not talk about your new background? Yeah, we went through the registration paper he put together. Got it right here. Good. Then we're already making progress. May I have a look? Sure, here you go. I hand the paper... I hand over the paper to him, and he exchanges it for the limp-looking parcel wrapped in fabric and twine. They had these in stock, and were the closest to your measurements. I requested finer material for you, so hopefully they should be comfortable. They may be simple, but it'll help to have less eye-catching clothes for now. And more importantly, clean ones. Thank you, I can't wait to try them on. I'll give you your privacy again. While you're doing that, I'll be reading over your conduct and memorizing it. I look down at the parcel, and notice that my claws are already threatening to pierce clean through the garments within. Wait, could you help me with something first? Of course, what can I do for you? Carefully putting the wrapped bundle with my new clothes on the bed, I hold up my hand to show Agnar the new weapon stuck to my fingers. I need to clip these claws. Oh, that's... His throat rumbles as he clears his throat. I must apologize. Hearing a lion request that sort of thing caught me off guard. Claws are quite valuable to the feline races. They usually take great pride in their appearance and care. Why do you want to cut them? They keep getting stuck to my clothes and tearing holes in them, and I don't want to ruin the new ones. It's easiest to just trim them down. Don't Sylphings have claws? We don't exactly have claws. We call them nails. They're mostly flat and not sharp at all. Some people do keep them long, but they never get stuck into clothes like claws do. They crack pretty easily, too, because they're so thin. So most of us prefer to keep them short. That sounds terrifying. I can't imagine anyone having claws like that. Ha. <laughs> I can see why you have trouble getting used to your new claws with such an experience. Agnar steps close, looking a bit curious, and offers a hand. May I see them? I hold a hand out and he takes a very delicate hold of it. He studies the back of it intently before flipping it over and inspecting the pad. He thumbs at the dull backside of one of my claws. Have you tried retracting them? I didn't know I could. I'm still figuring out this body. Could you try for me? I sort of feel around inside my hand, squeezing the digits of one hand in the others, looking for new things to try. I stretch and flex my fingers, trying to find or trigger any mechanism to deactivate my claws. I just end up wiggling my fingers around for a bit while Agnar analyzes them. Hmm. He leans in a bit closer, still inspecting my hand with a firm hold. His hand practically engulfs mine, being twice the size, his dark pads contrasting my pink ones. His grip moves down a couple of my fingers, giving a squeeze at each knuckle before tracking my palm. 
His pads are firm and rough on the outside, but I can feel the warmth from them when he presses in the middle of my hand. Agnar lets my hand slip from his, breathing out in resignation. You can't retract them, and I suppose it can't be helped. Let's cut them down a little, since it's the best solution. At least until you get used to them. Some would see you doing this as kind of a shame, though. Your claws are in pristine condition. Not if they're in the way, it would be more of a shame if I tore apart my new clothes on the first day. <laughs> that is true. Besides, who would I even impress? It's not like I know anyone here besides you and Mikkel. I'll have safe claws over pretty ones any day. You'll meet others soon, but I see your point. Just don't mention your claws to Lord Mikkel. He'll probably bombard you with questions about why you can't control them. It'll test your paws for hours. Agnar moves to the vanity, searching through the drawers one after the other. There should be a clipper here somewhere. While waiting for him, I feel around the inside of my hand again, seeing if I can retract the claws at all. Flexing my fingers open and closed. The open. Closed. Nope, still poking out. Ah, here we go. Yeah, I know house cats can do that, but can lions do that? Hang on. Can lions retract their claws? Huh. They can. Which big cat hit cheetahs? Yeah, cheetahs can't. Ah, here we go. He pulls out a pair of scissors with an inward curved blades, then places something small and rectangular on the table. An old friend had scissors like these for their dog, but these are bigger and the handles are a different shape. There's a hole for a finger on one handle, and the other is bent out at the end. It's decorated with a floral pattern on the side, reminiscent of waves within the small space it occupies. You'd better take a seat. He gestures to the stool and I take my seat on it. How do you usually trim your er, nails? How do you usually cut them? There's more than one way of doing it. I thought you simply cut halfway and then finished them off. Usually down till I reach the tips of my fingers. We just have to be careful not to cut down too far when we do. I- What? I- I cannot do that to you. Cutting them down to the paw is a form of torture. Doesn't really sound that bad. I knew he'd think it's unusual, but not to that extent. I guess it's the same if someone were to cut the nail all the way down to the base. I'd be too squeamish too if I had to cut them that far down. Um. I mean, I bite my fingernails. How would you normally do yours, Agnar? Us wolves like to make them sturdy when we shorten them. We don't use our claws to fight, and we're not built for more delicate work, so we keep them blunt and rounded. This keeps them from getting stuck on things, but still long enough to help with gripping. That sounds good to me. I can't let these dangerous weapons hurt any more innocent clothes, and by my own hands, no less. Let's go with that. Give me the claws of a wolf. Nah. He smirks, holding back a chuckle with a weak grunt. Oh my goodness. He goes to one knee on the floor in front of me, his face now composed as he licks his hands. <gasps> oh my god! Oh my god! No, I didn't. Oh my god, Agnar! Oh my god! Yes! <laughs> Putting my hand in his, he holds my fingers quite securely so they can't move. He places the clippers up close to my index finger before pulling them back and looks at me. Watch carefully to what I'm doing so you can manage it yourself next time. You might need to shorten them while I'm not here. I sit up straighter as he lowers my hand, holding it at an angle so the both of us can see. Resting the blade on my index claw, he snips at an angle on either side of it, then cuts straight across, leaving a clean edge. I wouldn't feel any different than normal, but I could feel it in my bones whenever the scissors snap. Not that it hurts, I could simply feel the tension and the vibration when it cuts. His movements are careful and controlled, moving from one claw to the next down the line. Agnar nods approvingly, and until he's done, the only sound in the room is him working. He then turns my hand to the side, taking careful hold of it around the knuckle. Thumb claws are a bit difficult to cut. They're usually sturdier and wider than the other, so be careful when you do this the first few times. I'll try to remember that. My nose twitches as it catches something in the air. I didn't notice it before, but there's a scent coming from him. Pine and mint. And there's something earthy that I can't quite place. 
It reminds me of a cold morning in the forest filled with pine trees. It suits the masculine image of this big wolf. Being this close, though, I get a better look at him while he's focusing intently on the claws. And see his brows winkle subtly before every clip, his yellow eyes being fully focused on the hand. The lighter portions of his fur look so clean and well-kempt, the darker fur serving to outline his facial features. His fur is thicker and longer around his neck, tufts stylishly sticking out here and there. His shoulders are really broad, his arms thick and defined, his chest is wide and illuminated by the light fur, a distinct patch of darker fur running across it. Oh, 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 oh. Always watching. Oh. Look at this here, Aaron. He shows me the hand he's just finished with, claws all trimmed. So distracted with examining his appearance that I didn't even notice he had switched to my other hand, let alone finished it. What's most important is that you don't cut them too short. It's not very easy to see. But inside your claw, there's something called the quick. You do not want to cut that. It will sting quite painfully if you do, and it starts about here. For comparison, he puts his own claw next to my, one of mine. I can see the different hues inside the claw he's pointing at. See the weak color appearing? Don't cut any farther than that. Got it? Don't cut past the colored part. Got it. He puts the scissors on the dresser, then grabs a rectangular object and presents it to me. Looks like a light brown sponge, but dried up. Now use this for the area we cut in your set. What is it? This is a pumice stone. It's a rock that was honed from a dead volcano. They can be used to smooth out your claws after a trim. Most people use sandstone, but this one is better for you to use. I'm sure Lord McKell won't mind it since you'll be using it, since you'll be the one using it. Demonstrates the filing process on one of his own cloths in small yet swift motions. You can slide it across in a way, but never towards yourself. It'll only damage them if you do. Here, try it. He offers the stone, which is practically weightless in my palm. I had never thought a volcanic rock could be used as a nail file. Can't really tell the difference between it between it and that bread, honestly. Sure, it looks easy enough. Holding the stone over my thumb claw, I slowly slide it across the way he showed me. The feeling of gratitude I had is instantly replaced with dread. It's like I'm scratching a chalkboard. The tingling sensation sends a shiver all the way down my spine to the tip of the tail, poofing the fur out. The wolf gives me an understanding but encouraging look. That's the usual reaction from first-timers. It'll take some getting used to. I was afraid he'd say that. I power through the discomfort, rounding them out until Agnar tells me I can stop and move on to the next. There's a moment where I think to myself how absurd this all is. I'm in a whole new world and I'm getting my nails done. The unpleasant feeling lessens as I'm nearly done filing them, but the tail is no less poofy. Hope we get used to it sooner than later. Good, you won't need to do that again for a while. I examine my claws, now being all nice and dull. New clothes are at least safe from being shredded. You seem experienced cutting others' claws. Have you done this before? I've helped those who didn't know how to maintain their claws. It was required that they learn so it wouldn't hinder their training. But that was a long time ago. That took an unexpected turn not to hinder their training. He stays quiet for a moment, not going into further detail. Anything else I can help you with before you get dressed? No, that was it. Thank you for helping me trim them. Then I'll be right outside the door. He didn't say it, but I could tell he didn't like thinking about the past. Must have hit a sore spot. I better not bring it up again. Alright, let's try to stay Always positive watching. and focus on the here and now. I'm going to pull up the sensor until the thing pops up. Now that the murder mitten's already clawed, it's time to finally see what I've got. Unbuttoning my pants, I pull them down and let myself be fully naked. Oh, uh, this is it. This is it. <sighs> okay, okay. I'm going to do the first option first. Going to create a quick save. I will screenshot it. Let me get rid of that and pull up that. I don't think of it. I haven't seen myself. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to the void. 
just for that, I'm going to pull up the cute squad. Just focus on the cute squad. I'm, I'm, I'm screenshotting that. And I don't know how to feel about that. Yeah, I don't know how to feel about it. I'll just put on my new clothes first. I can always check myself out in the mirror later. Cuties in the void. Welcome to the void. And now we're not in the void anymore. But I'm going to keep the cute squad up. No Liku Lao in the cute squad. There's just something about Liku Lao that I don't like. I'm going to check myself out in the mirror later. I unwrapped the parcel on the bed, having a gander at the new clothes Agnar bought for me. They're all brown or white and folded neatly. I wonder how it'll all look on me. I pick up the first piece of clothing, being the white underwear. Unlike modern boxers, this one isn't very stretchy, soft, but rigid in shape. It uses a drawstring instead of an elastic band. There's a hole the size of my thumb at the back of it. I slip my legs into them and pull them on. There's some trouble threading the tail through the third hole, but I manage after some maneuvering. Next up is the shirt, being a light gray color. Holding it up, it looks a size you're too, too big for me. Its arms are long, but the shoulders are narrow and there's a triangular opening with a string through it. Not exactly what I expected, but I decided to just roll with it and slip it on. Wait, what's getting eaten? You know what? I'm just going to say it. I'm just going to say it. I'm going to say it. I did not like Liku Lao's actions. I just did not like Liku Lao in general. He's cute. He's adorable. Liku Lao is absolutely adorable. It wasn't his fault, though. It, oh, it, it wasn't his fault. It wasn't his fault, though. It wasn't his, it wasn't his fault, my ass. It wasn't his fault, my ass. He was manipulated. And... All of them were manipulated by the little shit. Except Lin Hu. Except Lin Hu. Surprisingly, Lin Hu. Which, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I get it. Yan Shu Chi manipulated Li Ku Lao. However, and this is a this is a hill that I will die on. Lin Hu could have pulled Li Ku Lao aside and be like, "Hey, Yan Shu Chi is being a little shit. Yan Shu Chi is being a little shit, and he should fuck off. So don't listen to a single word he says because he's an idiot." It's time to drink water. It's time to drink did water. I incur your wrath? I'm sorry. It's time to drink water. It's time to drink water. Oh my god. That is aggressive. Not exactly what I expected, but I decided to just roll with it and slip it on. I thread my arms through the sleeves till my hands pop out at the end, then pull my head through the neck hole before sliding the rest into place. I sweep my hair back with my fingers and then give it a quick toss so it doesn't look matted. Next is a sole pair of pants, brown in color and just like the rest of it, it's outside the kind of clothes I'm used to. The seams go down the front of the legs rather than along the sides. There's a triangular cut in the back with a buttonable strap above it. This one's made of a tougher material, not far from denim. I put them on one leg at a time and pull up. I'm surprised my feet didn't get stuck as I pushed them through. It must be because pants in this world are designed with fat feet in mind. The tail, thankfully, slides into place with these. However, getting the button through the loop to secure it in place is troublesome. Take several attempts, but I manage it eventually. A belt was also provided, and I slid through the loops of the pants and fastened the buckle. It doesn't cover the hole around the tail, but what can you do? With the pants on, I try stretching my legs in different directions to see how it feels. It all fits surprisingly well, with the pants not being as restrictive as I was expecting. Ooh, handsome. Here, I will say this about Likula. I will say this. He is cute. 
Liku Lao is cute. I will say that about him. I will say that. He is cute. Now that I've seen the full ensemble, it doesn't look half bad. I had my doubts about the pants, but altogether it suits a setting like this. I'm feeling much more confident about my situation now with these new duds. It really makes it look like I'm part of this house. Part of this place. Turn around and take a cautionary glance at my rear. I think I've put them on correctly. You doing the OMG a hit tweet pose. Oh no. When I opened the door, Agnar is stood right beside, still reading the document. Must be deep in thought if you didn't notice me open the door right next to him. How's this? Did I put them on right? Well, look at you. You seem like you were born and raised here. He rolls up the paper and returns to the bedroom, ducking his head to spare the door frame. How does the attire fit? Great, these clothes are really comfortable. Thank you for finding them for me, Agnar. I'm glad they're to your liking. The tailor made sure to provide something to suit a male line of your build. You'll have no issue blending in wearing this. Now that we've resolved the matter of your clothing, we should discuss a few things. I sit down in the middle of the bed and he takes a stool next to me to keep us relatively level. We wanted to get your documents finished yesterday and spend today educating you about us and our world. With the hunt approaching, Mikkel will have less time to assist you for the next couple of weeks. So you're saying I should stay out of sight until it's over? No, the opposite, in fact. We should introduce you to the town as soon as possible. Agnar holds his chin and thinks, trying to find the right words. I don't know what it's like in your world, but in a small village like this, newcomers don't go unnoticed. Worse still, rumors of odd behavior such as shulking about or wearing strange clothes spreads quickly. The longer you stay hidden, the more curious they'll become, and the more exotic and paranoid the rumors will get. Which is why we came up with a plan to make the interest in you pass sooner. Every year, the results of the hunt dominate the talk of the town for a long time, meaning that if we can get you to seem mundane in the public eye, then the event will overshadow any word about you. We also need to give them enough time for their curiosity to wane. I'll be around to help you adjust to our everyday lives and look after you, to advise you on how to carry yourself or lend a paw if you stumble, things like that. You don't have to do or say much at first. I'll be the one fielding questions while you observe and learn to mimic our way of life. Lord Mikkel will teach you about our history and current events what, whenever he can this week. He was supposed to give his first lecture later this evening, and even took the afternoon off for it, but he's clearly in no condition for today. You said you're my guard now, so won't we be spending a lot of time together? Might as well just learn from you. I'm afraid not. I'm not as educated about these things as he is. I can tell you what I know, but I can't give you the in-depth understanding you require. With Lord Mikkel unavailable for your teaching today, I thought we could go for a walk outside and give you a tour of the village. It should help you get used to us. If you're willing, we can go down to the inn, and I'll introduce you to some friends of mine. They're good people and are very welcoming to newcomers, making it a great place to start meeting others. Getting outside doesn't sound bad. I've been stuck in this room for nearly two days now. Okay, bye. Ah! <laughs> Walking alongside them, instead of acting invisible in the middle of the street, could actually be a fun change. But for outside, you must promise me one thing. You cannot be seen using magic, no matter what. Alright, that burst of power coming out of me. There's still nothing within me that resembles the feeling I had in that cave. If there ever was, I'm certain I'd have picked up on it by now. Do you understand? I don't think you have to worry about that. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to make it happen again. You told me you didn't know how it happened. How can you be so sure it won't? Since I've been cooped up in here, I've been trying to recreate what happened in that cave, but so far, nothing. That's rather reckless, Aaron. You should have told me. Is there a chance someone noticed you through the window? Don't worry, like I said, nothing happened. Couldn't get anything to come out. Not even a spark. Here, I'll show you. <laughs> and, uh, oh, oh, well, hello. I concentrate and picture the sparks in my head, trying to make the power come out as I clench my fists and punch the air with all my might. Agnar leaps back, knocking me over the stool. His fur is poofed out in fear, as if he's about to meet a sudden demise. But nothing happened, just me doing weird hand movements like I'm trying to grab something in the air before putting them back down. I relax my arms, but and Agnar is trying to tame his fur back down. He is not happy if his scowl is any indication. I guess he didn't appreciate my eagerness to prove I don't explode easily. You'd better not do that again, Aaron. People would take notice if loud noises and flashing lights were to come from this house. Sorry, I just wanted to know what this power is. I had to make it really small, but nothing like back then, but I had no luck getting anything out. He still doesn't look happy, but his nerves are cooling off and his shoulders slacken. I tried everything I could think of while holding back, yet still, I couldn't get anything to come out. Point is, it doesn't come easy. No idea why, but it's unlikely to happen again by accident. Just a hunch, but I think it activated when I got really, really angry and upset. That also makes the most sense to me, at least. So as long as you don't get furious, this power should be under control. As far as I can tell, yeah. Hmm. If it really is connected to your emotional state, then you have to avoid letting your temper get the better of you. 
I don't know much about Magic or the Sylving's powers, but I'll trust that you know how to manage it. The word Sylving keeps coming up. I still haven't asked what it means exactly, but it's making me think about how this world has some history with them. It's hard to believe I'm one myself. It makes me feel like I'm from a race of elves, regarded as higher beings due to possessing some sort of power. Did Sylvings do something terrible in the past? How will people react to me if they figure out I'm not really like them? I tug on my sleeve and look up at the wolf. Hey, Agnar. Is it really a death sentence if, if someone finds out I'm a Sylving? Agnar looks a bit surprised and then apologetic. Ah, no, of course not. Probably. That doesn't sound too reassuring. I'm not sure what will happen. There's been no Sylvings in these lands for centuries. The wolf scratches his head, giving some thought on how to answer. Tell me, if I were to go to your world, would I be executed for being a wolf? I don't really know. Nobody's ever seen a real wolf man like you in my world before. I'd rather have seen a fox man like Mikkel or anyone from here, really. Unless I count the myth of werewolves and how they tear people apart like wild beasts in the movies, the response there is, of course, to hunt them down with the guns or whatever gets the job done. But it's better I keep that to myself. Agnar's case would be different, but the perception of him could range from admiration to firing on sight. There's no way everyone would be on the same page the moment they saw him. There's one way for everyone to be on the same page as soon as they notice Agnar. Drop him at a furry convention. I guarantee, I guarantee, people will be all over him. They'll be like, Yas. I guess it would be very mixed, good and bad, mostly because nobody would know how to react. Then you understand the unpredictability of it. While it's not a crime for you to be a Sylvie, it's been so long since one has been seen or heard. There's no telling how people would react. Oh, he absolutely would. The knowledge of a Sylvie here could cause an uproar, and the news would travel far and wide. The outcome would be chaos no matter what, so it's just not safe for people for now. Especially for Lord Mikkel's sake. As I said before, what he's been doing is highly forbidden, and I don't know if even his family can save his neck if someone figures out he's responsible. The most damning part is being that Lord Mikkel used a witch relic. That alone would bring more harm to those involved than anything else. Please don't judge him for using it, despite it being a crime. He wanted to help the people. There are those who still suffer today because of an evil witches in the past. He figured the best way to undo the harm they caused was to travel to the Sylving world in search of a solution. And the only way to do that is in secret. To avoid drawing attention, it's best we never mention witches, their relics, or the Sylvings to anyone. And if someone else brings him up, we should change the topic or leave. That was a lot to take, and I have so many questions about everything he just said, but I don't think I can handle much more pressure. I'm pretty sure Agnar would be the one doing the poking, prodding, and probing. I don't mean to scare you, but you have to be careful with your words out there, even when talking to those close to me. I want you to fit in and lead a normal life while you're here. To do so, you have to avoid any unusual behavior that might cause problems. The weight of those words sits heavy on my shoulders. I understand how important it is that I don't talk about witches, myself, and human stuff, but that kind of secrecy hits a little close to home. I, I understand. I won't tell anyone. I promise. I'm glad you take this to heart. Agnar raises the scroll in his hand. I read and memorized your safe contact. It's vague enough as far as backgrounds goes, but people might ask what it's like in Shallenhof. Did his lordship describe what it's like too before he fell asleep? Mikkel, not a lot. He told me it's a place with great views and that not many live there since it's underdeveloped, but that's about it. We'll try to learn more about it tomorrow. For now, when someone asks you a question you don't have to answer to, turn to me. I can either answer for you or pull you from the conversation. If you're by yourself, you can make an excuse like, you're still too weary from your fever to answer, or you can try to keep it vague, but whatever you do, never make unnecessary lies. The truth is often easy to prove, and it'll come back to bite you if you tell too many and they fail to line up. And always remember that just because someone asked a question doesn't mean you have to answer. You especially shouldn't feel pressured to give a response about something personal. This is why I want you to come with me today. Learning is all well and good, but it's better to do so from experience. We need you to adjust quickly while we still have excuses for any slip-ups like your recent fever or being shy. Are you confident enough on your feet to walk with me to the end? It's not far from here. I'm feeling the butterflies in my stomach, but I don't want to stay inside another day. Even after the serious talk we had and the stakes we faced, I finally have the nerve to show my face outside again. Going for a walk and meeting some of his friends is a good place to start. Maybe it won't be so intimidating once I get out there. Well, it's better I take the leap and jump into it. Sure, I'm looking forward to meeting your friends. If they're as welcoming as you say they are. All right, then we'll leave right away. Remember, you're Aaron Sondre now. You're a traveler, and it's your first time outside of Schallenhof. You were found ill on the road and were taken in by Lord Mikkel from the Vedskogen family, and I became your personal guard. 
I echo Agnar's words back to him, word for word. I repeat it a few times to commit it to memory. Good. I think you're ready to go. I can't wait for you to meet them. Finally, the more we talk about going out, the more anxious I get to jump out the door, but at the same time, I wonder what it's like downtown and what I'll see. I'll take you to the inn at the bakery. I know the people there well. They're actually the ones you've been preparing your meals. And they're on the same street, so there will be no unnecessary detours on the way. So we're not taking a tour of the town. Show everything that this place has to offer. I say that half joking, but now my curiosity is peaking at this point. <laughs> Take it slow, Aaron. I want to see how you hold up first. Come, let's head outside. We're gonna leave off here tonight. I, I just I just have to stop. We're gonna leave off here. Alright. I don't know if he's still alive. If he's still alive. I don't know if he is. But if he is, because I don't feel like doing like a raid or whatever, uh, go watch uh, Leo, my friend, the developer for Undefeated. He's currently live. He's currently live and uh, at the time of recording or whatever, reading where the demon lurks. I'm going to go watch that. So stay safe. Have a good night. And I will see you all tomorrow.